Well, this might look like a tribute to Red Green. It's uh, actually not. It's uh, just a little introduction to some of the fundamental uh, basics of uh, using XN and having virtual machines with Novell's Suzy. Hello, I'm Nick Pelton. I just want to review a couple more topics with you related to XN virtualization. The materials and courseware that's uh, used for demonstration here comes from Novell's classes uh, 3089 and 3090, which will be out soon. You will see a link at the end of this video, which will give you a listing of a training locator where if you were interested, and hopefully you will be, you'll be able to find a class near here. here with the network server that's virtualized right here. We're going to again do a config, except I have a spell it right. As we look here, we can see the IP address. You can see at the top there that it is XN virtualized. That would be an important thing. Is it will be an important thing as time moves on because more and more of the network stuff will be written for virtual servers. Um, you can see there that it is an XN virtual driver. You can also see the stuff you would normally see, such as the tree that it's in. I uh, want to just look to make sure that uh, DNS is working. It is uh, installed on the server. So we want to look at another host. Uh, Linux box it's on here. It's a Linux server that is also virtualized here. And you, you can see that, that uh, is, the name for that is uh, daoes a digitalairlines.com. Again, this material comes from the Nobel courseware. They just wanted a simple example. We're also going to review one other thing that is, uh, I found very helpful. That for some reason my keyboard did not want to work. You can see there that uh, it's DNS. I think the IP address is coming back as that. Um, we're going to also try and uh, ping the uh, virtual Linux machine. See, we can reach that too. We're going to try ping also the host to make sure that uh, we have reachability between the all three so that we can still, if we need to, get to the internet and still be able to come back and reach these here. Uh, that would normally be done by having a couple of NIC cards in the server and setting up routing on it or in the uh, host machine. That would normally be done by setting up a couple of NIC cards in the host machine in a lab environment such as this. See, that's the host machine there. Uh, so here we've here we can see that the uh, network virtual machine is able to contact the host and also the virtual Linux machine too. Quickly over at the uh, Linux box, the virtual machine here, just to try and make sure we can see the same things. We most likely can see that. See if we can find the network server. Network server, okay. And that's a few minutes. trick your uh, getting the keyboard to work, but there we go. And there we can ping uh, the machine itself, we can ping the network server, and we can ping the host. So we know uh, any communication we might need to have to the internet is going to work if, when we're going to go and set up uh, the different uh, attachments and the, to eventually put the uh, Linux server into the uh, tree that the network server is in. We can now switch back over to the uh, Zuzi uh, virtualized server. 
we're going to just look and uh, review how we might want to copy a file across from the host. You can see that we're going to use an SCP coming from the host. Thank you again for joining me for a couple minutes of an introduction to some of the topics that are covered in the Novell 3089 and 3090 class. Just some very basic details, but hopefully you found them useful as you go about setting up a test lab or perhaps using them in your current work environment. Is there anyone that has any questions? You in the red suit. <laughs>